Joe and Sean here from Revival Brothers. We're here today to show you how to use the default assumptions within IPA. We're going to start off where we left off on one of the other videos. Uh, we actually have a project here that we've analyzed. We actually own this property. We've analyzed it. But we're going to show you how to tweak some of the numbers in the default assumptions. And um, in one of our other videos, we also showed you how to create a template. So once you've tweaked the numbers the way you want, you can create a template in the same manner we showed in that video. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by just showing you how it's generally laid out so that you can kind of get a feel for what's going on. If we come down, by the way, we've created an assumptions button at the top here. So if you, want, if you don't wanna scroll down or whatever, you can just click this button and it'll scroll down automatically to the area for you. So the way that we have it organized is we have um, a budget column, an exit strategy column, and a time frame column. Now our budget column correlates to the, the investment column. Our exit strategy uh, uh, column here correlates to our exit strategies obviously over here. And then the time frames uh, correlates to everything uh, in, in the overall project. So I think starting off by talking about the costs involved in the investment, we can, we can start off by looking at the insurance. It's, uh, if, we, if we start going down step by step through, through this whole thing, you can see insurance is kind of towards the top of taxes. Uh, the insurance is calculated through the assumptions. If we come down to the assumptions you can, and, you, and you hover over insurance rate, it'll explain to you how it's calculated. If your insurance rate is different than what we have here, you can change it and you can save it, save it as a template and use it every time when you get back into uh, IPA. That way you, you only set it once and you don't have to worry about it again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this to uh, 1.6. And one thing uh, to note is that if, if you have an, an annual insurance amount already for your project, you can go ahead and manually input that as well. If you don't even have the insurance rate, you can any time. So uh, you can see that I, I changed this, uh, this to 1.6. Uh, this number did not change though. So how do, we, how do you change that number? You have to come back up here and run your calcs again. So, or, or you can, or you can click this uh, calc insurance button, which is probably easier. So if I click that, you can see it, it recalculated based on the 1.6 percent. And and the, again, the one, the 1.6 percent is basically a percentage of the estimated minimum coverage, which is the amount of the um, note itself, which is what you need the cost of the note what you're purchasing at and then if you're wondering why there's notes and reo here it's because we've we've analyzed this project as a note and you can see up here it says note if this was an reo we would want to be using the reo uh, factor because when it changes to reo it uses this this factor here so just keep that in mind now this offer price, this is a suggested offer price, and this suggested offer price is based on a percentage of UPV. Right now it's set to 53%. If we wanted to change that to something like, let's say your seller says, I can't accept anything less than 60%. So you come in here and you type in 60, and you come back up here, and again, nothing has changed, so you're gonna to have to calc off offer. So click on the calc offer button and it changes. Now you're at 60% of your UPB and that's that's telling us that we're at 19,000. At 19,000 it also changes our our return on investment because we're paying more for, for, the, for the project. So you can really start to study what's going on and, and what your minimum and um, maximum bid might be on, on a project. And also when you're you are going to be adjusting your purchase price you want to hit the calc insurance button again because that will uh, adjust your insurance as well. In this case so. nothing. Yeah. And then moving down, uh, we have direct costs. Now these direct costs are related to the direct costs in this column. So you can see everything that's grayed out here. Everything that's grayed out is in the assumptions. So winterization, cash for keys, attorney, preservation, 
all the all these fees are down here if I wanted uh, my attorney fees to be 2500 I can change that and as I come up here you'll see that that automatically changes the same thing for cash for keys if I wanted to change that to 700 uh, as I change it it automatically changes up here uh, winterization same thing like you may not need winterization you can just click that get rid of it um, same thing with cash for keys if it's if it's a vacant property uh, you can you can play with the numbers very easily uh, and then we have holding costs your loan servicing what what does that cost you can you can plug that in uh, your utility costs as well and all of that gets calculated in up here then we go over to our exit strategies over here now in our exit strategies um, for instance let, let's just uh, talk about flipping the note we're gonna go from the bottom to the top once we purchase the note we have the option to flip it what is our estimated time to sell the note uh, right now it's set to three months we can sell the note at a percentage of UPB what would that be um, if we held it for three months would that be at 60% would that be at 70% we can change that number here and as that number changes it's going to change uh, all the calculations under flipping the note so if we're on flipping the note you can see this change to 70% time frames at, at, at three months and um, our net profit is at 2800 um, as we move up we can go to looking at re-performing re the note we click on this button re-performing uh, you probably also want to click this if you want to see the the information up here in this this area <clears throat> when we're reperforming we can re how long is it, how long are we gonna hold it are we gonna hold it 12 months 24 months 8 months let's just say we don't want to hold it more than 8 months so we're gonna hold this at 8 months we're gonna sell the note at 75% of UPB let's say that we want to sell it at 80 what does that look like is there any kind of past due amount collected on, on it already if there is you would enter that here um, and then we come back up here and we can see all of those numbers have changed. So now we're at 80%, we're at eight months, um, our net profit has changed, our return has changed, our, our annual ROI has changed. So again, when you have these assumptions set and it works for a particular type of asset, you can create a template and use this for future uh, assets as well, where you don't have to change this. All you have to do is run the calcs and play with the numbers. So moving up to uh, uh, selling at foreclosure, we would come up here to sell at foreclosure. Now, this is basically all it's saying is what is our, what do we want to make as an investor? What is our minimum required return? We have it set to 15%. Maybe we don't want to take less than 20. So we set it to 20. At 20%, uh, this is saying that we're going to make a profit of uh, 4900 and our minimum bid needs to be set at auction at 29400 uh, Our maximum bid would be what's owed on, 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 the, on the asset, and the maximum we could make on it would be 11756 So it kind of gives you an idea of where your, your low and high is, what your minimum uh you know, would be for, for you to make a profit of 20% and how much you can make based on what's left in the, uh, in, in the unpaid principal balance. And then we move up to the rentals. Now, when we go to the rental area, uh, we have other factors that, that, that we've embedded in here. If, you, if Not all rentals will have a rehab fee on it. Some may have, you know, simple painting, lipstick, you know carpet whatever some may you may do nothing to some may be more elaborate than others if there is a renovation let's just say there is and we're, we're gonna put seven thousand okay when we do that 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 affects our our returns it affects you know our time frame it affects a lot of things but we we've, we've changed it here we've said it we've also said that our rental period is 12 months uh, that could be a 24 uh, month rental period you know whatever you, you're going to set the lease to we have it set to 12 i'm going to go ahead and change it to 24 just to show you what happens as i change that to 24 you can come up here and you can see see the correlation so the time frame has increased 
uh, if you come over to if you come over to here you'll see we're at 35.3 months now which basically uh, takes into consideration um, not just your your 24 month lease but everything else associated with you getting that thing to the point where you can actually lease it so it calculates everything for you coming back down to the rental uh, we have operating expenses you know you're going to have a management fee associated with that that rental property you may manage it yourself if you do you can put a zero in here um, you have maintenance associated with it. you have a vacancy rate could be more it could be less depends on the area and then it calculates the total operating expense um, on, on the rental and brings that into the rental area up here you can see at 25 percent so we know that our market rent is at 12 1250 which is pulling it in from this area here and, it, and so it calculates everything for you, gives us a cap rate, gives us our, our total recoup uh, time to recoup our initial investment, and tells us uh, what our total profit would be at the end of, of the term, uh, what our return on investment would be, and what our annual ROI would be. So you, you can start to really understand what's, what's happening with that rental as a, as a rental investment. Then we come up to, to the wholesale area, and the wholesale area correlates to um, to uh, our, we actually don't have anything related to the wholesale area in our um, assumption area. So, well, the, the, you you do in the sense that they have we have the agent. closing yeah the closing costs. So, I mean, if it's a wholesale, sometimes you know your agents may not charge a whole six percent. Just depends on your relationship. So you may adjust that downward, and or uh, your closing costs may be adjusted upward or downward as well. So yeah, for the wholesale, it's really gonna come down just to, to the closing cost. Right, but typically these these are- It's pretty, these, yeah, these pretty standard, yeah. Pretty standard, and it's gonna apply to both the fix and flip and the wholesale. And the other, the other thing that will impact that will, uh, will be the uh, time period to sell the asset. So uh, if your realtor says, hey, it's gonna take you know 90 days to 120 days, Let's go down to the time period and we'll adjust everything accordingly. Yeah, down in here. <clears throat> yeah, time frame is a is a big factor, and we'll get to the time in in a minute. But moving up to uh, fix and flip, the fix and flip is the same. Uh, what what's driving that again are the agent fees and the direct costs related to the rehab. So so you can manipulate those down there and that will affect everything associated with the fix and flip. Now, we talked a little bit about the time frame. So the time frame affects everything. So what we've done is we've kind of broken it out to little uh, chunks of time for tasks that need to get done. For, for instance, if you have a note, you need to collect collateral files. How long does it take you to get those collateral files? That depends on the seller depends on the status of, of, of the project. Um, in our case, we've come up with this number of about eight weeks to be conservative. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more, but eight weeks has been about what, what it takes to get those collateral files. Foreclosure period, that changes from state to state. Um, we found that you know anywhere from three to four months is, is typical. Uh, we try to leave it at four months. Eviction periods, again, that, that depends um, uh, on state to state, but uh, on average, it's looking like about a two month period. And then uh, your renovation, you know, this depends on your contractor and what your contractor thinks you can finish the project in. But, you know, if you're gonna do a full renovation, you better give yourself at least two to three months um, to be conservative. Uh, if it's a small renovation, you're doing some painting or whatever, you, you can lower this down to, you know, four weeks, two weeks or, you know whatever you think it's going to take to finish it and that will affect and change everything up here uh, time frames and everything and the time is important because time is money and you know you want to look at everything from an annual standpoint you want to understand your annual return so if you have a 14 month time frame your annual return is going to be less because you're gonna you're gonna eat into another year so you want to just keep that in mind when you're moving through these through the analysis.
and we've broken it down to where you have both your annual return on investment and your return on investments listed. So it gives you a pretty strong idea of where, where you stand. Um, and then down here, the other thing that we have in, under the default assumptions is a cost breakdown. Now this cost breakdown is related to each individual exit strategy. Right now it's telling us we've selected the fix and flip. And under a fix and flip, this is the cost breakdown. We're looking at a total cap capital invested of 88,735. If I were to come to a wholesale deal and click on wholesale up here, I come back down, it tells me I'm on wholesale and it gives me a total capital invested of 28,000, which is a lot less because we're not doing the renovation. And you can continue to do that with each of these investment strategies and you can see what your, your, your capital invested is. You don't have to continually come down here to look at that. You can also uh, see it in multiple areas up here. You can see your total capital invested in, in all of these orange areas under each of them. The other thing you can do is uh, look at the capital invested, uh, like for instance down here in the graph, capital invested. We can see how much capital is invested under each exit strategy and how much time is associated with it. And we can do the same looking at uh, return on investment uh, across the board and profit across the board. So there's multiple ways to look at the numbers and understand them. Sean, did you have something to add? Yeah, just a couple of things. Uh, scroll down to uh, the assumptions. Right there in the time periods where it says purchase date, Always, you always want to leave that blank until you actually uh, purchase an asset. Once you do purchase an asset, you want to put the date you purchase that asset. But up until then, always leave that blank. And uh, when it comes to, again, the um, days on market, you always want to double check that with your realtor to make sure you have that uh, inputted correctly. Um, although it does come in uh, once you run the um, fetch all button up above if you do have the assumption, uh, if you have the uh, automation version. But uh, you always want to double check with the realtor just to make sure you get your timelines in order because it has the timelines do have a big impact on your overall um, budget analysis when you're looking at your projects. And the other thing um, regarding the actual budget itself on the left uh, column, let's go ahead and show the budget on the left column, Joe, all the way up. Scroll up. So this column where it shows budget, that budget is is built for the fix and flip. So at the very bottom of the pro of the project cost, that is a fix and flip cost. So your holding costs, your insurance, all that is built for the fix and flip. So that's why we have a separate uh, breakdown of all the costs for all the other different exit strategies below. So just uh, wanted to make sure you fully understand how the uh, costs are breaking down. Uh, but I think uh, everything else you pretty much covered. Uh, did you cover the tooltips? Yeah, I believe I did. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, hopefully this was uh, informative for you. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Sean, give them the... Yeah, the email is support at revivalbrothers.com. Shoot us an email. We'll get back to you.